Hey everybody, so today we are gonna be a little bit more laid back uh, because the whole purpose of this video is to tackle something that I've, I've experienced, uh, I know a lot of others have talked about, discussed, just came back from a conference of women in tech uh, leaders and that sort of thing uh, in Boston. And I heard this a lot. And the topic is, what is work appropriate? Now that we're, a lot of us, or at least uh, returning to office, uh, what does that mean now? And do we actually agree with what it used to mean? Uh, and also, this is not just for women, by the way. Um, I know that there are a lot of uh, dress codes and what would be deemed appropriate for certain types of meetings versus days where you have a no meeting day. You know, a lot of that will kind of dictate what you're uh, deemed in appropriateness. But I am a woman, so I'm going to be going from a woman's perspective, but I'm going to tie into just like general themes of dress of, um, you know, different jewelry or accoutrements, right? So if you're a man, you know, does that mean a watch or cufflinks, you know, that sort of thing. So we're going to go through a little bit of that because uh, if you notice from the thumbnail, there's a lot of different ways that I dress even for work and a lot of different ways that I dress and, and act on YouTube as well. And so uh, today I'm going to be doing this video barefaced. This is what I look like as soon as I dry my hair out of the shower. So um, I am very, very privileged to um, thankfully have pretty clear uh, skin. And so I don't have to wear a lot of foundation, a lot of things to, you know, make myself presentable. And I keep doing the air quotes because we're going to tackle that as a conversation in this video, which is what does that actually mean? And why uh, is it okay to go in uh, to the office looking one way versus another? And really, what are the perceptions behind that uh, that is often portrayed versus what is maybe the reality? Now, I don't know the reality of your situation. So again, take all the things in this video with a grain of salt. And maybe this isn't your cup of tea. But, you know, if you're interested in some of these topics, um, I decided to make this video because um, there's some things, especially if you're a manager or maybe you are uh, of, of one gender and you're managing a lot of folks of the other gender or, you know, a lot of different um, skill levels because, you know, I've often noticed that, uh, you know, the saying, you dress for the job you want, not the job you have kind of mentality. Um, to be fair, my mother taught me that. <laughs> I don't know if I totally agree with it nowadays, but, you know, it, it is it is a saying. Um, a lot of this also comes into how we manage and how we interact with one another um, in the workforce. And so I do, you know, sprinkle in videos like this on the channel. So hopefully you find this interesting. But so I recently uh, went to that conference that I mentioned earlier and um, what I was asked by someone who was very innocent, didn't really, you know, mean anything by the comment was, oh, you really look like that in real life. Uh, that's the other thing. If you're not returning to office full time, um, the way that you are perceived in reality versus what people maybe know of you from the last few years uh, where you're mostly online is also different. And so um, I was kind of taken aback <laughs> that um, some people thought I would use filters on, on my videos. Um, this is, look looks blotchy. I, I, this is me. This is what I look like. Um, no filters. Um, but also I, I was hearing some comments like, oh, you know, you uh, do your makeup so like, you know, kind of cool and whatever on some of your videos. And, you know, I thought I, you know, you would do that in real life. And yes, I do, but I'm on camera, it's still real life. Like I'm still doing this in real life. Um, you're just seeing it after I've recorded it. And what's interesting about that comment was, um, Sometimes, um, now, I mean, YouTube is, is a whole different animal, but when you're doing things online, sometimes uh, you do, as a woman at least, uh, need to put on maybe more vibrant colors or maybe wear more vibrant colors. Um, you don't want to use things that are too reflective. Like, I, I really can't see without my glasses, so um, sometimes you'll see reflections in my glasses from my screen or from my windows or, or something. Um, normally you don't want to do that when you're on camera um, just because it can get distracting but I can't see without my glasses so <laughs> that's why most of the time I have them in or on and um, you know what I, I noticed was 
a lot of folks didn't always understand that um, women, specifically, I'm talking about women that, you know, for this situation um, that I know of, uh, were doing things with their clothing and their makeup and um, maybe even their jewelry where, you know, rings and, and neck or rings and um, bracelets weren't as popular because you can't see them, you know, on camera. Um, or, you know, maybe they would wear a really fun, uh, vibrant top or a more work appropriate top. <laughs> Meanwhile, they have sweatpants and, you know, comfy shoes uh, or slippers on and you can't see them. So like mixing these things now into, oh, wait, I can see all of you again um, is, is a fascinating thing. And so the perception uh, from, from the thumbnail, um, I've heard a lot of people say that, oh, you're wearing a lot of makeup. Who are you trying to impress? at work. And it's like, why do I have to impress anybody? Um, I'm me myself. Um, I actually love doing makeup because I find it fun. Um, it's like painting, but your own face and there's, you know, sparkles and like, can you do this cool thing with the wing liner? And like, I just find that fun. Um, so if you see any kind of crazy makeup I do sometimes, which I don't think I do anything too, too crazy. Um, it's cause I find it fun. Um, I actually have uh, my sister lives long distance from me and we both enjoy makeup. And so sometimes we just get on in the middle of the night, you know, to talk with one another while we're doing our makeup and we're not doing it to impress anyone. We're just doing it with each other as companionship. So, you know, if you do see someone that has a lot of makeup on and again, like men also concealer, um, sometimes, um, you know, hiding blemishes, um, you know, normalizing their skin color. Um, so it's not just women that are putting makeup on. I'm just saying women here because of my perception and I am a woman speaking about it. Um, but it, it's certainly not excluding anyone else that wears makeup. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you're trying to hide something. It doesn't mean that you're trying to, to show that to others, um, for a specific reason. Sometimes it's just because you like your own self-expression and that's what I've noticed. Um, and if you look at the three thumbnails, I'm fresh faced is what I am right now, right? I don't have anything on. Um, I have noticed, and this is a, a very specific in, in my own experiences, um, comment from men, which is, oh, I can't stand when women wear makeup, you know, it's so fake. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you have so much time on your hands that you're doing your makeup instead of, you know, being serious and taking the job seriously. And that is so, so off base. Um, and it's a weird perception, honestly. Um, just because somebody likes to do their makeup, maybe in the morning you really need to sit down and drink your cup of coffee. Um, or maybe you really, you know, love skincare. And again, that can be any gender uh, liking skincare. Maybe you really like um, your your eyebrows to be very defined and, and men can do that, right? Men can go and get um, manicures because maybe they really love their hands to be very clean and, and precise looking. Um, those are personal preferences. It should not imitate or, or be used to um, think that you know somebody and how and make judgment calls on it. So when you're doing this um, yourself, uh, be aware that others could be taking judgment calls from it. Um, and I, I point that out because you still need to be aware of the way that you're dressing and how it's affecting your job or the people around you and the perceptions. I don't like that. I don't think we should be doing that, but it happens. And so when you do start to pick up on some of these things, for instance, I had a job um, that was pretty toxic at one point where I noticed um, a new boss I got um, had very strong opinions about women and what they looked like and their age. And um, basically, long story short, I noticed when I was on camera and he could see me and I was wearing makeup, uh, he would be very, very disrespectful to me. Um, everything I said was um, stupid or you know, not well informed. He didn't even ask to follow up why a silly person like me would even pose one of those questions or one of those suggestions, um, assuming that I had no real reason behind it other than, you know, I'm just a uh, young, fresh face that just doesn't know anything. 
Um, I was upper management at that time, so apparently that didn't mean anything. <laughs> but I picked up on that and I did some experiments where I would stay off camera for a little bit uh, uh, for some meetings. And when he didn't know it was me talking, I mean, yes, you could see the name showing up, but he didn't register that that was me because he couldn't see me. Um, he treated me with more respect. So I, maybe that's not the only reason he was doing those things, but you know, there was a correlation of some sort between him seeing me on camera versus just hearing me. Um, and you know, if you're someone that does have a baby face or a face that looks younger than your actual, uh, age, then, um, you may have experienced some of this, but also on the other side of the spectrum is if you look more mature, sometimes there are judgments on that, like, oh, are they really going to understand that? Like, are they really up with the times? Um, there's judgment calls that are associated with ages of, of all of all denominations. And um, that's, that's really sad. Um, so, so one, if you are the recipient of that, um, you know, make sure that you pick up on that and have a conversation with the people. In my situation where I was in a toxic uh, environment, there was no talking to the person. So I removed myself from the situation. I got a different job. Maybe you are not in the situation where you can get a new job, but um, maybe distance yourself from that person as much as possible if you know they're not going to uh, respect you for, for pointing it out. Um, but also um, on the actual age versus looking of age, there's the appropriateness of, of age too, right? So if I look uh, maybe more mature and I'm dressing fun and vibrant and I have, you know, big blue eyeshadow and all of those things, there's sometimes that perception of like, ugh, at your age. Um, what does that mean? What does a 42-year-old versus a 23-year-old, like, in general, act differently? Like, there are certain characteristics that, you know, probably are different. But, um, you know, I've always been told I look a lot younger than my age, but I act more mature than my age. <laughs> so I'm an old soul, as, as some people have said. But all of these kind of ways that we describe these things are putting value statements based on what people look like. And um, that's the other thing is not just the fresh faced look, but if you go on the other side of the spectrum, if you are doing some of those, you know, wild and crazy, meaning just maybe colorful or more sparkly or, you know, looks like you did your makeup, um, <laughs> that also can come off in a strange way where you might start feeling like others are, are maybe judging you on that. And again, that's where you need to have those conversations or remove yourself from it. And I would also say like, don't let these things change you because work appropriate as we're talking about here is different depending on who you're talking to. So, and, and the industry that you're in, I used to work in very prim and proper and you have to wear a, a suit to work kind of place. And I hated it because my personality is fun and bubbly and friendly. And what I was also noticing is even though I was wearing the suit, if I did not act like, yes, I understand. We will do that. We will do so. Like for those that watch this channel, like, could you imagine me sitting here talking like a governmental robot for that long? No, that's not me. And it's boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what, what happens is if you don't act that prim and proper and very serious, um, I use a lot of colloquialisms and, and things when I'm talking, I try to use more uh, analogy than using, you know, the jargon. It makes people, and I've heard this, it makes people think that I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes. It makes them feel like I'm not very serious or I'm very young. Um, all of which is in their minds a negative. So what I get irritated about when I hear things like that is I talk in the way that I do to make things approachable. Hello, YouTube. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? Like this is hopefully why you're, you're watching this channel. I try to make things approachable. And I almost have at this point found it, when I talk to others who are experiencing the same thing, 
we've all kind of like picked up on sometimes it's the insecurities of the others that are um trying to judge us for these things because they themselves find it a security blanket to hide or to to comfort themselves that they know the jargon they have this they have that they are like very serious and therefore um they are always taken seriously and and to show almost a vulnerability by being more human is painful is risky to them in their career and this is my call to action for anyone that is experiencing that or you know maybe your personality isn't you know bubbly and happy and all these other things which is also perfectly fine if you are a more serious person if you are you know, trying to be precise by using the jargon. Those are all good characteristics. And I also do that. Um, when I am talking in front of Senate, for instance, which I've done in my past, you can't get up there and talk and do like this, like I do on YouTube, right? So we all wear different hats for different situations, but don't hide who you are. Even when I'm being serious and speaking the jargon, I make sure to explain that jargon. I try to make sure to still use some of those analogies, but I use analogies that are, um, again, a little bit more serious instead of like my how many cats on cat kind of thing that I say sometimes, or, you know, the grandma versus five-year-old like test on understandability. I don't use those in those more serious uh, situations, but on the other side of the coin is those perceptions. And that is, why is it that we have to sometimes feel like we have to hide behind these uh, these rules of appropriateness? Now, of course, there are real rules around appropriateness. You shouldn't go to work and have things exposed or things that are going to be too distracting. So maybe like if you're doing some really, really like you got jewels on your face and all these things. Maybe that's that's going a step too far and maybe you're now a little too distracting. Um, that's where you have to kind of draw that line. Maybe your skirt is too short because you can you know, see too, too many things. Um, but I had one time I was wearing a, a skirt, and a, a work skirt, a work like um, a suit kind of thing with a skirt. And I was wearing high heels because that's usually what you wear with a skirt. They were not stilettos of any sort. They were just like normal like work shoes and um my skirt went to my knees but I wasn't wearing what's called um pantyhose I don't know what others call it um like uh like the what's the other word for pantyhose I don't know that's what I call them like um hosiery I guess I'm, I'm, I don't know maybe I'm showing my age uh, but the the stockings right the, the sheer stockings that you wear underneath um skirts and, and dresses I find them uncomfortable. It was in the summertime when this happened. Um, this was years and years ago. Um, all of these things are from years and years ago for the most part. Um, and I remember also talking to someone that was only, I don't know, maybe 10 years older than me. And she made a comment on it like, oh, I would never, I don't know if I would have done that. That's very inappropriate. I'm like, wait a minute. Who's sitting around in a boardroom? Which, by the way, you can't see my legs in a boardroom. It's underneath a table. Um, looking so closely at my legs to see that I'm not wearing sheer like pantyhose. Who, who, who's doing that? And then what, what kind of judgment are you making on that? Um, so this is a weird one because I don't know if guys would really pick up on that, but other women are judging each other on this all the time too. And don't get me wrong. Like there's the whole guy thing too, where, um, you know, I, I, I know this, from, from a lot of the men in my life where, you know, how big is your watch? Is it, you know, a Rolex versus, you know, something else? Is it, um, you know, are you wearing cufflinks or are you not? Are you wearing um, your buttons buttoned up the whole way? Which, by the way, strangles most guys, so it's not that comfortable. Is it okay to unbutton the first one? I don't know. Um, are you, do you have a three-piece suit or is it just, you know, um, a, a sports jacket over some slacks and a button-up? All of those things have a way of presenting and portraying something to an audience. And again, I don't agree with it, but just make sure that you're picking up on some of these cues because um, first, some of the tips that I have are, um, if you're not familiar with the proper attire, first, don't even lose yourself, right? Do what you wanna do because you love it. 
Um, but also you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. So I usually reach out to somebody that's also going or has done it before, or maybe is from that office or has been in that situation before. And I just ask like, you know, are, what do people normally dress as? Because um, you can go the opposite direction of, of um, I did this from my job interviews where, again, I was coming from that very like prim and proper wear a suit to work every day to a tech company where I got there and everybody was wearing like jeans and a nice top. And I was there in like a suit with heels, which was really ridiculous because I didn't ask ahead of time. It was a campus, which meant I had to walk all over creation in these heels. And I wanted to die by the end of the time I was doing that. And isn't that interesting? I couldn't walk around because I was in heels. I was hindered by a stylistic choice of being proper. But it assumes that you're going to be stuck in an office. Like walking around D.C. when I was working for embassies and things, um, I didn't get that memo. I didn't know that um, in D.C. you still have to wear the pantsuit. You're very prim and proper, all that. People are walking around, even guys, with their tennis shoes, right? Because it is ridiculous walking all over creation on the subway in D.C. with dress shoes if you're men that are like pinching your shoe, your feet. And, you know, they have to be just so shiny. Remember, don't rem don't don't get a scuff on them or, or dirt. Um, and then women in their heels, they keep those in their bag and they take them and then they put them on. We are ridiculous, folks. I'm just saying, like, come on. Why do we do this to ourselves? I know that th that I can't change anything um, about some of these things through one video, but good gracious, <laughs> I gotta put all my extra shoes on my back and then I gotta get to work with my tennis shoes. I'm gonna run, right, to, to work in my tennis shoes. And then I'm gonna put my horrible shoes on that are proper so that I walk around uncomfortable. I can't move around very well. And by the way, if I wanna go get lunch or a coffee, I have to switch out my shoes all over again. Uh, stop right <laughs> this is some crazy stuff sometimes and you know it even gets into like if you're in a colder climate um what kind of uh you have to have certain proper uh winter attire where um you know you have like a tweed jacket you know um and like this very uh skinny little scarf thing and men and women do both of these things and then on the weekends or after work you have your big puffy jackets with like the big fur th fake fur around the hood and you got your big clunky boots on and you got your big wooden wool, woolen um uh gloves and scarves looking like you're going to the tundra right um that is what is reality <laughs> so why do we have to have all these like weird clothes just to go into an office right and so what I hope to do, like walking through um, this video is, one, well, giving some examples and some perceptions that I've heard from a lot of different people, um, kind of pointing out how ridiculous some of it is and also trying to give some tips, right? So if if you find out, you know, maybe dress shoes are the, the standard for the place that you're going to or for the situation you're gonna be in, maybe opt for some flats, right? At least those are comfortable. Um, or if you're um, a man, like the, the penny loafer kind of things, those are at least a little bit more comfortable. If you have to wear a full on suit, um, maybe, and you're gonna have to do that regularly, maybe splurge for a suit that has a little bit more stretch in it so it's not as uncomfortable. Or maybe something that's from, um, even though it looks like a suit, um, it has more of like a breathable fabric, you know, cause goodness knows you're probably sweating to death in the thing. Um, oh, and then there's like the, the etiquette stuff too that I didn't even touch on, which is like when the guy sits down with a suit jacket, they're not supposed to unbutton both buttons. They're only supposed to unbutton the first button or the last button. If you are coming from a situation um, or a background like I was, where I didn't have a lot, um, I didn't grow up with people around me that could teach me some of these weird etiquette rules. I made, like, I remember going to my first conference and I had a suit jacket that I barely scraped by buying and I didn't have enough money to tailor it. But, you know, I thought, oh, it's okay. I was called out on how long my sleeves were. They came to, like, my knuckles and apparently they're not supposed to. And, I mean, I'm the kind of person that you don't see my hands too much in videos, but I like the, um, the, the long sleeves that have the little like thumb pocket <laughs> because I like things going over my hands to keep them warm. Um, so I didn't realize that I needed to do that. Um, my bottom of my pants 
um, I thought were a good length until I wore them with heels and then they were too short. Um, like all these weird etiquette things that like, who teaches us this stuff, right? Like maybe you can look up videos and things to, to teach you these things, but like all of this is that like secret handshake in the office. And like that, that's, that's just is so odd. And I think it's still there. And I just wanted to make this video to kind of point out some of these things so that, you know, if you're not picking up on them or you're not really like it's it's maybe picking up in your subconscious and you're not really like picking up on it um, regularly and addressing them or seeing how others are perceiving these things and trying to address those um, judgment calls that shouldn't be probably happening. Um, and I mean, again, didn't even get into some of the different like cultural differences. And, you know, I know like different hairstyles and things um, like when I like crimp my hair or, or uh, curl it, um, it is a different perception than the smooth. This is my natural hair, um, just smooth. And then, you know, maybe you have braids or maybe you um, like to have your hair like, you know, your natural poof out. Um, there's a lot of those um, things that if you did it this way or you did it that way, it's perceived in a certain way in the workforce. And so um, I think we need more videos like this just to get it all out, to, to talk about it, to like identify when we ourselves are making these judgment calls, um, but also to help empower those that feel like they're the odd person out. I was certainly one of those. I remember sitting at lunch um, at one of my first jobs uh, that was my like a career job. And I never had an etiquette class. Um, my parents were working class, um, lower working class. And so uh, I didn't know that you had to put your napkin in your lap. I didn't know that when you were done with your utensils, you, you know, set them, you know, on the side of the plate. I ended up having to mimic those around me and just pick up on those things to learn them. And I mean, that's everyday human, right? Like it's not just a return to office kind of stuff that, that does this, but think about that for a second. If you're not as observant and I was making faux pas, why is it a faux pas? Why is not putting my napkin in my lap why, it pegs me as something, but what does it peg me as? It pegs me as somebody that didn't know any better. And I didn't know any better because I didn't grow up in a household or around people that already knew that. Right? How many of us are in that situation? And that's why I also wanted to make this video is if you are that person, you're not alone. And find an advocate, somebody at work, somebody in these meetings, um, in these events, that you can pal around with and get them to show you the ropes because unfortunately this stuff is not changing. I hope desperately that it does. And if it does, then we will all just naturally start to accept each other for who we are. The left says it all, right? Like I wish, it's a big wish. Um, but that's that's why I, I did wanna make this video is to kind of like walk these things and highlight them, give some of the tips, give some testimonials and to make sure that, again, the world is telling you differently, but be yourself. Like, yeah, you know, fit in as much as you can so you don't stick out like a sore thumb, but don't go against who you are. You are who you are and you are amazing and you are wonderful. And the people around you are going to appreciate who you are. You're not just a mindless robot. And if you have to act like one once in a while just to, you know, get through a meeting, so be it. But feed in a little bit of yourself each and every time, right? So you're going to gain that trust. You're going to gain that respect until eventually, hopefully, you can be more like yourself because you're showing that person their bias uh, through your actions is unfounded. So uh, I hope this is helpful. I kind of did this as a self-therapy uh, video as well. <laughs> I need to remind myself of this all the time. Um, but if you have stories, if you have tips, if you have things to say about this, please fire it off in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts, your opinions, and your stories. All right, so with that, I want to thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.